Welcome to Interventional Radiology, part of the Diagnostic Imaging Center. This is where you will receive image-guided procedures using various medical imaging equipment, such as CT, ultrasound, MRI, and fluoroscopic scans. In this video, we will show you how to care for your general catheter. We will also share helpful tips to manage your catheter at home. The hospital will provide you with a starter pack of cleaning supplies after your procedure. You will need to contact a medical supply store for refills of supplies. The supplies include liquid soap. This can be Hibiclins or unscented soap. Two packages of four by four inch gauze pads. One optional package of two by two inch gauze. Four inch cover roll tape, which is the Metapore cloth tape or Coverderm adhesive dressing. A resealable plastic bag to dispose of the old dressing and use supplies and disposable gloves. You will also need warm tap water for the cleaning process. Your catheter supplies include CTU-30 connecting tube, drainage leg bag. Your abscess catheter needs to be cleaned every other day or if it becomes soiled. You may shower with the site uncovered seven to 10 days after your procedure. Do not shower with the site uncovered if the site is red or has drainage. Use mild soap and water in the shower to clean the insertion site. Cover the site with a gauze pad after you dry off. Follow these instructions to clean your catheter. Wash your hands with soap and water. Gather your supplies and place them on a clean, dry surface. Put on a pair of gloves. Remove the old dressing while supporting the tubing. Throw the old dressing and gloves away in a resealable plastic bag. If you have stitches, Look at them to make sure they are still holding. Inspect the catheter insertion site and surrounding area for redness, warmth, swelling, drainage, or a bad odor. If any of these symptoms are present or if your stitches are not intact, contact your healthcare team. Put on a new pair of clean gloves. Open the four by four inch gauze packages. Pour the liquid soap over the two pads in one of the packages. Next, Pour warm tap water over two pads in the other package. Take out one gauze pad and clean the catheter site with the liquid soap. Work in a circular motion, moving from the catheter site outward. Repeat with the second gauze pad. Take out one gauze pad soaked with water. Using the same circular motion, clean the soap from the catheter site. Repeat with the second gauze pad. Discard all gauze pads in the resealable plastic bag. Pat the area dry with a clean 4 by 4 inch gauze pad. Place this gauze in the plastic bag. Place either a 2 by 2 inch gauze pad or 4 by 4 inch gauze pad over the catheter site. If using a 4 by 4 inch pad, fold the pad in half. With the folded edge up, place it under the tube. Fold the other 4 by 4 inch pad the same way and place it over the tube. Cover the gauze with a piece of the cover roll tape or Covaderm. Take off the gloves and place them in the plastic bag and seal it. Place the bag in a trash can. Then, wash your hands with soap and water. Next, we will learn how to clean the bag. You need to empty and clean the bag when full or every other day. Use gloves when changing dressings, tubes, or bags. Replace bag at least once a month or more if an odor is present. You need to keep a daily log of output from the drain. Debris can cause a blockage in your catheter. This results in a decreased amount of fluid collected. Call interventional radiology if 10 milliliters or less of fluid is drained for three to five days in a row. Your catheter may need to be repositioned or removed. Call your doctor or interventional radiology if you have a fever of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius or higher, new or worsening pain or discomfort around the catheter site, redness, swelling, or warmth around the catheter site. The catheter is pulled out from the skin. Leaking around the catheter site or continued decrease in the drainage amount despite flushing attempts. Breakage or holes in the catheter. The tube stops draining completely. If you have any questions or concerns, talk with your doctor or call Interventional Radiology at 